Our today's topic of discussion is posterior capsular opacification. Posterior capsular opacification PCO, is the most common complication of cataract surgery. PCO can cause significant visual symptoms and is effectively treated with laser capsulotomy. Evolving understanding of the underlying pathophysiology has led to modifications in surgical techniques and intraocular lens designs with the potential to decrease the incidence of PCO. Posterior capsule opacification PCO, often referred to as secondary cataract, is the most common postoperative complication of cataract extraction. In PCO, the posterior capsule undergoes secondary opacification due to the migration, proliferation, and differentiation of lens epithelial cells LECs. PCO can cause significant visual symptoms, particularly when it involves the central visual axis. Despite advances in surgical techniques, intraocular lens IOL, design, and development of therapeutic agents to inhibit PCO, this condition continues to impose a significant burden on patients and the healthcare system. PCO occurs in 20-50% of patients within 2-5 to five years of cataract surgery. Although the incidence of PCO is reported to have declined in recent years, there is no definitive data, and the reported decrease may represent only a later onset of PCO. Children and infants have a significantly higher incidence and earlier onset of PCO, along with the potential for associated amblyopia. In children, reported rates of PCO reach 100%. Younger age is a significant risk factor for PCO. Other potential risk factors include the presence of conditions such as diabetes, uveitis, myotonic dystrophy, retinitis pigmentosa, and traumatic cataract. The pathophysiology of PCO is multifactorial. During routine phaca emulsification surgery, the surgeon excises a portion of the anterior capsule capsulorexis, removes the cataractous lens material, and then implants a synthetic lens into the intact capsular bag. PCO occurs when residual LECs on the residual anterior capsule undergo three phenomena, proliferation, migration toward the posterior capsule, and normal and abnormal differentiation. One. The accumulated LECs result in opacification of the intact posterior lens capsule, with resultant negative effects on vision. Multiple cytokines and growth factors, including transforming growth factor beta TGF beta, fibroblast growth factor 2 FGF2, and hepatocyte growth factor HFG, and matrix metalloproteinases MMOs, have been implicated in the pathogenesis of PCO. Exogenous hyaluronic acid HA, a component of some viscoelastic substances used during cataract surgery, may result in increased rates of ex vivo PCO. PCO has two forms, fibrous and pearl, also referred to as proliferative. Fibrous PCO occurs due to abnormal proliferation of LECs, and presents as wrinkles and folds on the posterior capsule at the site of fusion of the anterior and posterior capsules. Histological examination reveals extracellular matrix ECM, accumulation and elongated fibroblast cells. Pearl PCO is responsible for the majority of PCO-related visual loss. Pearl PCO is composed of normally differentiated LECs that line the equatorial lens region. Examination shows clusters of swollen, opacified, and differentiated LECs called bladder or Weddell cells. The onset of blurry vision or visual acuity decline after cataract extraction should prompt the examiner to look for signs of PCO. The diagnosis of PCO is clinical, based on history and slit lamp examination of the eye. Most patients present between months up to several years following uneventful cataract extraction. Patients may complain of decreased vision, blurred vision, glare, light sensitivity, impaired contrast sensitivity, halos around lights, or difficulty reading. If PCO involves the visual axis, patients typically present with decreased visual acuity. Slit lamp examination reveals a semi-opaque membrane with variable levels of fibrosis forming on the posterior capsule. Other notable signs include Elshenig's pearls, seen in pearl-type PCO, in which clusters of residual LECs appear as round, clear pearls that shine on retroillumination. If these accumulate on the visual axis, they can cause decreased visual acuity. Soemmering rings, rings of residual LECs and cortical fibers that form between the posterior capsule and the edges of the anterior capsule remnant. These are often too peripheral to cause visual symptoms, but they can cause glare and visual loss if severe. 
PCO causing visual disturbances most commonly treated in older children and adults with neodymium YAG, ND, YAG, laser capsulotomy. Rarely, it is treated with surgical capsulotomy. Although non-invasive, quick, and effective ND, YAG capsulotomy is not without significant risk and expense, and may not be available in large parts of the developing world. Complications are uncommon but may include retinal detachment, IOL damage, cystoid macular edema, increased intraocular pressure, iris hemorrhage, corneal edema, IOL subluxation, iritis, macular hole, corneal endothelial cell loss, and exacerbation of localized endophthalmitis. Rarely, patients may develop reopacification and require a second laser treatment. The estimated annual cost of ND, YAG capsulotomy in the United States alone has been estimated at $250 million for 1 million patients with PCO. In younger children who cannot be safely treated with ND, YAG capsulotomy, visual axis obscuration due to PCO can be treated with pars plana vitrectomy and capsulectomy. Various pharmacological and immunological methods to treat PCO are under investigation, but in vivo studies have not yet shown conclusive efficacy or safety of these modalities. Despite the ability to effectively treat PCO with ND, YAG laser capsulotomy, the potential complications and significant cost of treatment makes PCO prevention an important goal. Additionally, as new, accommodating IOLs that rely on flexible and intact posterior capsules become available, the prevention of PCO formation will gain further importance. Many studies have attempted to identify interventions that delay or inhibit PCO formation. These interventions include surgical techniques, IOL design and material, and pharmacological interventions.